My name is Paul. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. And I also would like to pay my respects to the elders past and present. Backyards are an important space um, for people to socialize, exercise, and relax because they are easily accessible. And backyards are also uh, good for children to exercise and expose themselves to nature because they are truly private and secure. However, our climate is getting warmer. Uh, it is expected that um, the number of very hot days in Melbourne will triple by the end of this century. And um, that's a challenge for people who want to stay outdoors because when air temperature increases, um, it is less comfortable for people to stay outdoor and their willingness to stay outdoors will decrease. Planting trees is regarded as a silver bullet to uh, cool the environment in urban areas, but planting trees in this kind of backyards is not feasible because they are too small. We need to figure out another um, solution for that. Perhaps we can remove the lawn in the backyards and converting them to swimming pools. Um, we can have a poolside party for adults and swimming lessons for children. That sounds really cool, literally and emotionally. But my colleagues will disagree because we want more green space in our neighborhood. But actually, water is the key to Kudi's backyards because water can change our climate. And therefore, I'm proposing to use water to change, um, to make our backyards cooler. And this is how it works. When radiation hits the ground, it can be converted to either sensible heat, latent heat, or soil heat. Sensible heat is the heat that we can feel. It can change air temperature. Latent heat um, is uh, associated with evaporation and transpiration. It can change humidity directly and air temperature indirectly. I'll explain that in a moment. Soil heat is the heat stored in the soil. Since energy is always conserved, radiation is equivalent to the sum of sensible heat, latent heat, and soil heat. And the relative size of these heats depends on soil moisture content because it controls how much evaporation and therefore control um, latent heat. If we can increase latent heat, sensible heat will, has to reduce and air temperature has to reduce too. Let's look at a simple example. On the left, when soil moisture content is low, um, sensible heat, the red line, and latent heat, the blue line, are similar. On the right, when soil moisture content is high, the latent heat became larger because there is enough soil moisture for evaporation and transpiration. And the overall impact is that um, sensible heat became smaller and we have a lower air temperature. In my PhD research, I, I proposed using irrigation to cool backyards. And this is different from traditional air, um, irrigation. People in traditional irrigation, people want to irrigate by night because they want to improve um, water use efficiency. In contrast, I propose irrigate by day repeatedly to maximize evaporation and transpiration because in that way I can get more cooling benefits. It is feasible to irrigate by day because we can use great water instead of portable water to irrigate our backyards. To understand the cooling benefit of irrigation, I set up this experiment at Burnley campus of the University of Melbourne. My hypothesis is that um, irrigated turf is significantly cooler than non-irrigated turf in the afternoon. These backyards, um, these um, simulated backyards are similar to the ones that you saw in the satellite image. And the unique thing about this experiment is that it is a controlled experiment, which is not very common. And it is an urban study, which is not very common either. Lastly, um, we um, have three replicates for each treatment. At the center of each plot, I set up a weather station to measure the impacts of irrigation on soil moisture, soil temperature, air temperature, and a number of other things. Um, I measure air temperature at 1.1 meter above ground because this is what we experience. 
this is the data from the summer of this year. Uh, the red line is the air temperature changes of the non-irrigated turf. The blue line is the air temperature changes of the irrigated turf. And um, the irrigated turf received one millimeter of irrigation um, for four times every day. I calculated the cooling benefits by subtracting the blue line from the red line, and this is what I got. Be before the start of um, the irrigation at 12 o'clock, there was already some cooling benefits at minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. And what's even more important is that after each irrigation event, the cooling benefits in, um, became stronger significantly. From 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., the average cooling benefit was minus 0 0.9 degrees Celsius. To put this minus 0 0.9 degrees Celsius in context, we have to look at other, um, the impacts of other cooling strategies like tree shade. In Melbourne, tree shade um, can reduce air temperature by 1.5, by 0 0.7 to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So um, in comparison, irrigation, the performance of irrigation is actually pretty good. Apart from working on the experiment at Burnley, I'm also working with Southeast Water to measure the cooling benefits of irrigation in other people's backyard. We are working on it in a, sub, uh, in a housing development called Akarevo, which is located in Lynnhurst. Each of the house in this housing development is equipped with um, rainwater collection system, recycled um, wastewater system, they can use these alternative water sources to irrigate their backyards and gardens. I've also developed a smart irrigation algorithm to optimize um, irrigation amount based on the potential evaporation on the previous day and the current soil moisture. If the previous day is a bit dry, the algorithm will automatically irrigate a little bit more today. We have we are also developing low-cost weather station to uh, measure the air temperature in all 460 private gardens um, in the community because we want to know um, the impacts of irrigation on a larger scale, not just um, the backyard, but the whole community. To answer more complex questions, like how do we use irrigation to cool Australia's and towns and cities, I need to use um, computer models. And currently, I'm um, validating and calibrating some urban climate models, uh, like this one, UTNC, with the experimental data that I've collected. And after validating um, the model, I can use it to predict the cooling benefits of irrigating with different amounts of water on different soil and vegetation types and in cities with different climates. Hopefully, my research and collaboration with um, the industry, the public, and computer modelers will help Australia to better cope with the warming climate and allow people to spend more time in their backyard to exercise or to have a poolside party if they like. And lastly, I want to uh, thank my supervisors over there, <laughs> Steve, Stephen Livesley, Kerry Nice, and also the technical staff at Burnie Campus to who support my experiment and also my research partner, Southeast Water. Thank you.